In this video, we're going to focus on the terminology we use when talking about network diagrams. First word we're going to look at is vertex, the plural of which is vertices. And the vertices are basically the dots or points that we see in the network diagram. You can see that we've labeled them with capital letters. They don't have to be capital letters. Sometimes they can actually have names, like names of cities, for example. Uh, another word we use for vertices is the word nodes as well. All right, now moving on to the word edge. The edges are basically the lines that connect the vertices. We can see an edge joining E to F. We can also see an edge that joins D back to itself. We'll talk about this edge a little later. If you look at the vertices I and E, you can see there's actually two edges that join I and E. We say that, this, that these vertices have multiple edges. We're now going to look at terms three to five. So the third term we're looking at is called a directed edge. And basically a directed edge is an edge with arrows on it. And we can actually see this in the second network diagram. So why do they have arrows? For instance, we can see an arrow going from vertex B to vertex A. And what that means is that if I'm traveling, I can only go in the direction from B to A. I can't travel from A to B. You can see that if you were to travel from C to D, that you would actually be quite stuck. You can't go back to C. You can't go back to A. The only thing you can really do is just go in a loop and go back to D. Directed edges are actually very useful on maps to show one-way streets. All right, now term number four, which is a directed network. Basically, a directed network is a network with only directed edges on it. Okay, so if you look at network two, that is a directed network because all the edges have a direction. We also have what is known as an undirected network, which is basically a network with only undirected edges on it. So network one is an undirected network because none of the edges have an arrow on them while network two is a directed network. Okay. Now it is possible to have a network diagram that has a combination of directed edges and undirected edges, but if you get that, it means that it is neither a directed network nor an undirected network. Let's now move on to term six to eight. So term number six says the degree of a vertex. So if I was to circle, let's say, vertex E, you'll notice that there are four edges connected to it. So for that vertex there, we would say it has a degree of four. The way we write this is we say the degree, D-E-G, of E, and we put the E in brackets, equals four. Let's do another one. Let's do... F, which has a degree of three, only three edges connect to it. The degree of F would equal three. All right, so now we have term seven and eight, which are talking about having an even degree or an odd degree. An even degree just means that the degree is an even number. So if we look at vertex E, which has a degree of four, because four is even, we say it has an even degree. And vertex F has an odd degree because three is an odd number. Vertex H has a degree of three, so that would go under having an odd degree. And if we look at vertex D, you'll notice that there are four edges connected to it. So that we would say that that one has an even degree, even though two of the edges connected to it are technically the same edge, we still say it has a degree of four. 
So we're going to look at some more terms now, terms 9 to 11. Term 9 is called a loop. And basically a loop is the edge that we saw on vertex D. It is an edge that starts at a vertex and ends at the same vertex. I'll write that down. Next we'll talk about what is called a simple network. A simple network has no loops and also it doesn't have multiple edges between vertices. So what do we mean by that? Well, if we look at vertices E and I, they have more than one edge connecting them. We say that they have multiple edgy edges between the vertices. So what we learn here is that neither network 1 nor network 2 is a simple network. So what would a simple network look like? Well, let's just draw uh, three vertices, call them A, B and C. And we'll just connect them like so. This is a simple network because it doesn't have any loops and it doesn't have multiple edges between vertices. If I wanted to change this one so it was not a simple network, I could quite simply draw an edge from A to B, sorry, a second edge from A to B, or I could draw a loop down for vertex C and then it becomes a network that is not simple. All right. Lastly, we'll talk about what is called a weighted edge. And let's look at the edge joining F and G, and let's give it a number 12. In fact, you can give it units as well. Let's say 12 kilometers. Basically, a weighted edge is an edge with an associated number. So the edge joining F and G is now a weighted edge. This comes in handy for things such as maps. It might show the distance between two vertices. It can be used for other things as well. Lastly, we want to talk about how to label edges and vertices. Now we'll start with vertices or the vertex. We've already discussed how to label them. Usually they're labeled with capital letters, but they don't have to be just labeled with capital letters. They can be labeled with words as well. For example, you might use the names of cities if the vertices represent cities. Okay. Now edges are a little harder to label. It's nothing terrible though. Let's say I wanted to label the edge joining E to F. I would simply put in brackets the two vertices E with and F with a comma between them. And that is how we would label the edge. How would I label the loop joining D back to D? Well, I would simply go D comma D to show the loop labeled. That concludes our video introducing the terminology of networks. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.